What's up, everybody? Thank you for coming back for another video. Just to let you know, this is take two of today's video. Yes, I made a whole eight minute video and it came out with no sound. Unbelievable. So I will get through this one very quickly under eight minutes because I don't like talking too much. Also want to let you guys know that I thank you a lot for being patient with me and everything I got going. I did recently get back into taking classes. I'm over halfway through on pursuing my bachelor's degree in business administration. So thank you again. Just like we talked about in our last video, the AK is out. Mullen acknowledges the delisting letter coming from NASDAQ, and they also confirmed today that they want to do an appeal against that letter. And I don't know if David watched my last video titled Mullen to Appeal Delist Letter, Buying More Time or Not, but he sent a tweet out two hours later saying, rest assured that if and when we receive delisted notice, we have every intention to file an appeal immediately upon receipt, which postponed the delist process until the panel makes a decision. Straight from the AK, it says, on September 6, 2023, the company requested a hearing before the NASDAQ listing qualifications panel to request a further extension of time and present its plan to regain compliance with the bid price rule. Had the company not requested this hearing, it would have been subject to delisting on September 15, 2023. And just like I mentioned in my previous video, I felt like Muller Automotive had no other option. This was the best option for them to buy more time and figure out a plan to get that stock the hell above one dollar per share with the appeal process going to be taking place Mullen has to pay that 20k for the Nasdaq to make a decision on whether to down below in the red suspend or delist securities or grant them an additional 180 calendar days from that September 5th, 2023 date, which was in the green. The hearing panel also has the authority at their discretion to add additional criteria that Muller Automotive has to meet in order for compliance as well. So they should be buying back shares. They should be given operational updates on production. They should also be given a solid plan on any financial progress here in the near future, as well as any partnerships, all to meet deficiencies with the NASDAQ and in hopes that the NASDAQ will grant them an additional 180 calendar days. I haven't lately really touched on the lawsuit since I put this video out on August 29th titled What Mullen is Up Against When Suing These Big Brokerage Firms. If you haven't watched it, feel free to go back and watch it. I talk on how these alleged firms will turn the blame on someone else and really draw this process out. This video was not to downplay the lawsuit. It was just to make shareholders aware of how long it would actually take for this process. And now that we see hearing from the latest interview between between David Mitchery and Wes Christian, they did state this type of lawsuit on these big firms would take at least two years. So maybe shareholders have a little bit more insight on how the process will be lengthy. As I look over to my next screen, Mullet is currently trading at around 45 cents per share. And as you can see, we double tap that all time low of 39 cents. And it looks like shorts could be possibly covering here, coming from that first jump at that 39 cent level and being shorted right back down. But could this all time low of 39 cents be the bottom for Mullet Automotive if they can get their shit together? It has to hold for upside because you can see here on the weekly, you see the TTM squeeze with that green arrow is curled up almost crossing over green and as i move the picture over down below the picture you can see the green here the green candle signaling an uptick in the stock price and that's what we want to see here on the ttm squeeze below you can also point out the same scenario here on the monthly chart which is an even longer of a time scale than the weekly but you can see the macd is in the green and the ttm squeeze is also curled up just like the other chart down below but like I've said many times before, the same bad actors can see the exact same charts that we see. Manipulation is still going to take place. The naked short and the spoofing, the dark pool, and any other illegal trading activities, they're going to continue to take place affecting how the stock price moves. This is just a general snapshot of what I see, no guarantees. But in closing, like I said, with this appeal process going to take place, Mullen needs to capitalize, do some shit to get this stock price above a dollar because 39 cents needs to hold in 
in order for consideration for more upside. And if it does not, it will continue to be more setbacks and would not be the best thing that could happen while you're delaying the delisting process with an appeal. That's all I got for this one. Told you guys under eight minutes. Like I said, this is take two of today's video. I feel really, really shitty that that first video didn't go through. I really put a lot of more emphasis into it. But still, hope you guys find this information valuable and I will catch you next video. I'm gone.